Hello again. Let's learn about raising exceptions and inventing your own exception. First, we're looking at the assert keyword, which raises an assertion error. To study it, we're taking the float of some input. We're expecting a positive number. After that, we're checking with an assert if the number is greater than zero. If it's not, this is the output we will see. You do not have to give this part, but you could. We see here, there it is. Otherwise, we do this. So, assert. You give it something that's true. The thing is, putting it as part of your production code is a very bad idea. You only want your asserts while you're developing code because in the long run, if your code is really practical and usable, it's going to be optimized with a dash O at the time it is run. The first optimization that always happens is that those assert lines are taken out of your code to speed things up. So that was a bad idea. Instead, you really want to do an if. If the number is greater than zero, then you return the number. Otherwise, here I'm raising a value error. This will be what the magic string of the exception object will display. This is raise1.py. We're going to import it. Here in raise2.py, we're importing that first one so that we can call get positive number that raises an error. One thing you can do in your exception handling is you can put in some statement about what happened and then say raise. If you say raise with nothing to raise, it will raise the last error that was raised. So that's handy. In fact, that's really handy when you're debugging code. It, you can show the data line that made your program crash. Helps you a lot. Here in the output, we see that was wrong. That's what I asked to have printed. And then the traceback. Very handy technique. Here we're making another get positive number. But this time when we raise our value error, we're putting in two arguments. Then when I collect my value error as my exception object and I print it, I see that what came back was a tuple, the same arguments. So that's why there was a magic get item when we looked at the help on exceptions. I want to help you understand what I'm suggesting that you do in this exercise. I give you some data.txt. Actually, I give you data.txt and bad data.txt. You see that it looks like data, looks nice, all lined up. But look here, there's a missing datum. And maybe there are a few other problems in this big file data, which isn't so big, it's just a sample. Because in your reality, you have a growing data set. So you want to look for problems in your data set in your solution to this. I don't want to look with you at this solution until you give it a try yourself. But I do want you to notice that the first thing that happens in main is that I ask if you would like to renew the data so that you can start over with bad data. That's why you have bad data and data. When I run the program, it asks me if I want to renew the data. And what that means is, do I want to start with all the bad data again? Yeah, let's start fresh. And here I have an error that came out. It tells me in the error that line 957 has a problem. It's exactly the line we looked at. We get a trace back in check data that raises a value error, and that value error tells me what is the problem and where. It only has seven elements. And then I go and I fix that datum. Here I am at line 957, and there's that empty spot. I'm going to get rid of the line. I don't have anything else I can do with it. So I will just remove it because it's a bad datum. Save it and run again. Back to my program. 
Now I'm not going to renew the data, so I don't see the same problem we just fixed. So your job is to write the program that I'm running here. Okay, I'll see you when you're ready to look at my solution.